Title, Sudan Puts Its Guns on Snooze, Aid Conference on the Horizon. TL, DR, Sudan's embattled factions have declared a timeout, hitting pause on the two-month turmoil that's been shaking up the African nation. All this calm before the storm of a pledging conference designed to whip up funds for some serious humanitarian assistance. It's like crowdfunding for a country, folks, but with less gimmicky rewards and more life-saving relief efforts. And now, to our super spicy, yet sadly serious, news coverage. Sudan, which has been more of a battlefield than a country lately, decided to take a much-needed break from being at war with itself. Sunday morning brought with it a ceasefire, or in simpler terms, everyone's weapons got to play hooky, following two months of persistent kerfuffle that had the country doing the chaos cha-cha. Residents in the capital, Khartoum, and its neighboring city, Omdurman, even reported a relative calm on Sunday morning. Must have felt like waking up and discovering all the noisy roadwork outside your apartment had suddenly stopped, right? Ah, sweet silence. And why the sudden truce? Well, it seems to be the warm-up act for a pledging conference that's going to take center stage on Monday. The United Nations and other nations are getting together to pass around the digital donation hat, all in an attempt to cover Sudan's mounting humanitarian needs. It's like a really tense charity auction, but instead of bidding for a celebrity-signed football, you're trying to save lives. The funds raised from this conference are urgently needed, given that the UN had only received a meager 16% of the whopping $2.57 billion needed to assist those in need in Sudan for 2023. It's like trying to foot the bill at a fancy restaurant, only to find out that everyone else forgot their wallets at home. The ceasefire agreement was announced on Saturday by the United States and Saudi Arabia, who've been playing peacemaker for the last two months. But here's the real kick, this isn't the first truce they've tried to broker. Previous attempts have been as successful as trying to build a sandcastle during a tidal wave. Sudan spiraled into disorder after months of simmering tensions between rival generals erupted into open fighting, turning urban areas into battlegrounds. Can you imagine your quiet suburb transforming into a real-life Call of Duty map overnight? More than 3,000 lives were tragically lost, and over 6,000 were wounded. It's like the aftermath of an epic Marvel Civil War, but without the fancy suits and superpowers. So, what does all this mean for Sudan's future? How will this ceasefire, if it holds, impact the nation? Can we expect to see substantial aid coming in from the pledging conference, or will it be a repeat of all talk, no action? And, most importantly, will the Sudanese people finally get a respite from the constant conflict, or are we just in the eye of the storm? Remember folks, we at Turned Up News are here to ask the hard questions and provoke thought. But we don't have all the answers. So, we turn it over to you, what do you think will be the fate of Sudan? And how can the global community step up its game to provide better support? Drop your thoughts and let's.